Real Country 1430 AM and 107.3 FM WRDN. I'm Brian Winnikins. This is the WRDN Morning Farm Reports. And uh, joining us this morning, Wisconsin 3rd District Congressman Ron Kind, as we talk about some ag issues and other issues, too. And uh, thank you to our newsmaker uh, sponsors, including a j Agronomy, Synergy Co-op, Osseoplastics, and a Silo, the Anima Wellness Center of Buffalo Valley and Compere Financial. And uh, Congressman Kind, thanks for joining us today with... Um, Let's talk a little bit about the Paytech Paycheck Proche- Protection Program. Wow, I need another cup of coffee. Um, with that, there, there's been a recent story that it looks like rural states like Wisconsin received most of that money, which actually I think is a good a good news. Yeah, it is. I, I just re- refer to it now as P3, Brian. I saved myself a lot of problems, just the P3 program. But yeah, you know, I worked hard to make sure that our family farmers also qualified as a small business for the Paycheck Protection Program or the P3 program because they are small businesses and they have been going through a very tough time during the COVID crisis. And so we accomplished that last year uh, in the COVID package. uh, And we're making sure that it is being rolled out and worked well with the Small Business Administration. You're right, Wisconsin has benefited greatly given the number of small family farmers that have been applying and qualifying for this assistance, but it's not complete because the Small Business Administration has decided to limit the qualification to just sole proprietorships, which is the which is most of the family farmers in Wisconsin and throughout the country. But that does exclude partnerships and LLCs, and that wasn't Congress's intent. As long as you're a family uh, uh, farm uh, operation with hundred up to a hundred thousand dollars worth of gross profits using Schedule F as your tax form, you should be qualifying for the P3 program. So we're working with SBA now to, to clarify that. Uh, if they can't do it internally, we'll try to get language in this next COVID package to take care of it so that all of our family farmers are qualifying. Meanwhile, Ron, I know there's been a lot of talk, and, and I, I think it's been solved, but the IRS, of course, uh, the lovely group that you know makes the mafia look bad, in my opinion, um, they are like, oh, whoa, 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 wait, we, we get a cut of this. I didn't think that's how that was supposed to work. Well, it's not because, again, at the end of the year with the COVID package that we passed, we are allowing that uh, to be tax free and small businesses can deduct their expenses that they're using the P3 money for. So you can still deduct that in your taxes or expense it as you normally would. So it's, I think, a real good boost for small businesses we will naturally be working with the Department of Treasury and the IRS to make sure that they're clarifying appropriately. But uh, in the meantime, uh, you know, this is first impression. We've never done this before. These agencies are grappling with the nuances of it all. And I think they're gonna need further congressional guidance of what we intended. I guess I have to ask as a Congressman, is it frustrating you pass something and then, you know, federal agency alphabet soup, whatever you wanna call it, I'll pick on the IRS just because I don't like them and that they decide, well, this is how we think it should be run too bad. And they don't even, they don't even come, I guess, first to say, oh, by the way, we are confused on this. What should we do? Yeah, that's what gets me, Brian, is if there is a question mark over their head, they should come back to Congress and say, hey, what was your intent here? Because they're supposed to administer the laws that we pass and follow closely what the congressional intent is. And very seldom do we get that. Sometimes we've got to have hearings and call them before us and go through this with them. Uh, But that's one way of clarifying it. But it's also the cost of doing business, Brian. We're all human. We can't anticipate every aspect and every nuance of every program. So we rely on these federal agencies, given their built-in expertise in dealing with this or something similar, to come up with uh, a lot of the solutions. And most of the time it works well. Sometimes they don't get it right. And that's where you need to have a legislative branch working very closely with the executive branch in order to work through the wrinkles that might that might pop up. Talking with Wisconsin Congressman Ron Kind uh, today. Well, uh, Congressman Kind, of course, over the last week or so, the story has been GameStop. I guess I have to ask, did you buy any GameStop? I, I didn't. I, I missed that roller coaster ride. But man, it has opened up a lot of eyes, though. And I, I know Congress is going to be taking a close look at what happened and why. So let's talk about that. For a lot of the folks that are involved with this, they're just average people that you know, some, many, maybe never even have traded a stock before. Others have been involved with this and they've said, you know, we're only doing what the hedge funds have done to 
small investors, companies, and all that over the years of, you know, basically saying, well, we're going to short to sale this company to force it go down. We go on TV and say the company's not worth it. And it, it creates a cycle. And these folks were like, hey, wait a minute. We're, and they all just, everybody got together, not just in the United States, it seems like, but a lot of individual investors all over the world got together and kind of, quote unquote, stuck it to the, the hedge funds. And now the hedge funds are asking for regulatory relief, but, you know, not just in the stock market, but also in commodities, agriculture commodities and all of that. Have these folks exposed something that's been going on for years that maybe Congress needs to look at? Yeah, I think, first of all, I, I like the idea that there are uh, avenues now to democratize investing in America. So, you're, so the individual investor who may not have a lot of money to begin with, but does want to invest for the long term, isn't hit with a lot of expenses, a lot of brokerage fees, a lot of hidden expenses, and just buying some basic shares of stock. That, that's a good thing. But uh, I think one of the caveats to what we've seen over the last week is be careful with the information that you're getting from the internet when it comes to your own finances. Because sometimes group think doesn't work that well, and you could get caught in a frenzy and invest when things are going up. Uh, but if you're the last guy out, uh, it's going to be very, very expensive for you then too. Uh, and that's why, uh, you know, for an individual investor like myself, uh, I tend to hew uh, Warren Buffett's advice. And that's go with a simple broad-based index fund, very low fees that are charged. You're betting on the entire U.S. economy because I, as an individual, just don't have the time to study uh, the financial books of individual companies and know whether they're doing all the right things or not or if it's a safe investment. So, uh, uh, but, you know, if other people want to deal in individual stocks, that's fine, but just be careful because there's always a downside, just as there is going into a casino then, that you may end up lo losing some money. I, and with the, with the folks that, are, that have been really, you know, the folks on Reddit and the folks on the internet and all that, they've been saying, well, the hedge funds have been doing this for years. They treat it as a casino. And, and they are also, they've manipulated the market by if I'm a hedge fund and I say, boy, I don't like the Ron Kind company. So you know what? I'm going to sell it short and I'm going to yeah. go on CNBC now and say that Ron Kind company is terrible. And, that, you know, we think it should only be worth a dollar and we sold it short to start that process, shouldn't that be just as wrong as what these people are doing where they said, you know what, we disagree and let's try to get the stock to go back the other way. And yeah. they're, they're also using just public information. Yeah, I think you're right. And there is a problem with short selling with, especially these larger entities. First of all, there's already a law against them uh, placing a short bet on a company and then talking it down and bad speaking it uh, on the public in order to encourage the stock price to go down. That's already prohibited under laws and the SEC is supposed to be monitoring that behavior. But we're talking about you know billions and billions of dollars that these hedge funds have a bill because they're managing pension funds. They're managing other uh, huge financial instruments that the typical investor doesn't. So they have the potential of moving these markets just with the volume of, of trades that they're doing. And then when they do uh, try to sell short, uh, they're betting on a company to decline in value. And uh, uh, that's problematic. And I think that's an area that we have to look into. Another area is the high frequency trading that the typical investor doesn't have access to. And this is microseconds of invest in investments that are being made uh, so that any variation in the stock price could be worth millions of dollars to these uh, big traders. And that's something else that's always bothered me, the fact that it is limited to a few entities that play in the stock market, but it's not available to everyone that's investing in the stock market. I mean, you probably experienced this yourself, that when you, when you put in a buy or sell order, oftentimes it takes like 24 hours before it uh, clears. Whereas these big hedge funds, they can do it within a microsecond uh, uh, of the order. And that's an unfair advantage that they have in an un uneven playing field that I think we have to address. Does some of that also have to translate to the to the commodity markets? Because again, they have they could do all the exact same thing with commodities and affect the family farm and the farm gate price back here at home. Well, absolutely. If you had a bad uh, uh, report on some crop in South America, for instance, and you got to that report. Uh, before the general population did, you could put a bet on that commodity then 
expecting it either to, probably to go down uh, before the rest of the, the population realizes it. And that, that again gives you an unfair advantage uh, with the information that's available. So this stuff does get complicated, uh, but we need to figure out more ways. And this is an area that I've carved out for myself, Brian, on the Ways and Means Committees. How can we democratize retirement savings opportunity for just the average people, especially those working in small businesses who oftentimes find it difficult to set up a 401k or a simple IRA. Uh, and, and through the SECURE Act legislation that I drafted and passed last year, it's gonna be easier now for there to be uh, multi-employer plans established. So small businesses can congregate and set up simple 401ks or simple IRAs with a lot less expense with no liability concerns, with greater ease to allow you know, small business employees to invest in it. And uh, I just think that's been a black hole when it comes to retirement savings opportunity that we had to get into and make it easier for the average person to be able to invest and hopefully invest for the long term so you can kind of ride the growth of our economy instead of just uh, taking short-term bets on everything. Is, is there any talk about potentially doing something like that? Even, you know, I, I know you can have a personal 401k and farmers may, may have that right now, but is that something even for farmers? Because it might be a little bit harder. Again, for myself, I like the fact that I, if I want to buy one share of John Deere, I can do that and, right. and, and slowly build that up. So, and we have that right now. And, and there's always a concern that there's going to be so much regulation. We're going to lose that, but is there, what about for farmers? Yeah, absolutely. Farmers would be able to participate in this SECURE Act as well, because, again, they're going to be able to congregate, whether it's through the Farm Bureau or Farmers Union or some other farm entity, to be able to uh, offer these uh, retirement savings plans uh, for their membership. And uh, I, I see great potential in the coming years of that just exploding and making it a lot easier for people who normally wouldn't have had the uh, means or the resources themselves to do it on their own be able to do this within kind of a small uh, business format. What about the online brokerages? There's you know, a lot of the folks that are involved with GameStop. They're like, oh, these online brokerages, they're now, we figured out where they're in cahoots with the hedge funds because they limited our trades, which then affects how that short squeeze works. What about like the Robin Hoods and the Weebles and some of these other online brokerages? Do they, does there need to be some review of them? Yeah, I think, you know, we are going to be having, we're teeing up hearings right now about what transpired and we need to peel that curtain back, especially the role that they played uh, uh, as well. But again, I think it's uh, an interesting stick it to the big guy, stick it to the man type of action that we saw over the last week or so with the hedge funds and they got caught with their short positions and they lost billions of dollars. But you saw how that stock just skyrocketed uh, 600% almost overnight but also how quickly it can come down again. And that's where the individual investor could get caught, not knowing when to divest, when to get out without suffering some severe losses. Reddit now, I guess, is 60% down just yesterday alone, uh, which is a huge hit for them. Um, and so, yeah, this, this stuff can get pretty tricky and you need to be careful what you're doing or, or you're gonna be losing some money. My dad always said, when you do stuff like that, don't be greedy because all pigs go to slaughter. And yeah, that's probably a, a, on both sides of that, big big or small. That's right. <laughs> all right. Well, Congressman Kind again, we appreciate you joining us this morning. Good. Anything but talking about the Green Bay Packers. Uh, that's reeling yeah. from it, Brian. That yeah. Tough and there, well, now there's where you should be holding hearings. I mean, if we're going to hold hearings about something, you need to call Matt LaFleur in and, if you, and Mike Pettin, even though he's not with them. And I think you need to hold hearings on that because we need some answers here. Well, my, my answer was go for it on fourth down. Keep the ball in the hands of the MVP player and don't expect your defense, which has been shaky, to have to make a stop for you to win a game. Exactly, exactly. Wisconsin 3rd District Congressman Ron Kind, you're listening to the WRDN Morning Farm Report.